back to another one here. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the love of you that is continuous. It says it's renewed every day. Hallelujah. No matter what happened yesterday, today is a new day. Hallelujah. This is the day that you have made, oh Lord, and we rejoice in it, Lord. We are the blood bought. Lord, we are the redeemed. We are not who we used to be. That man is dead and buried, Lord, under a lot of dirt. And I thank you, Lord, that we're walking in newness of life. And I thank you that you have invested so much in us that you gave your son, your son to die on a cross for our lives that we might walk in victory. And Jesus, you were not defeated. You willingly gave yourself away that we might be the redeemed of the Lord, that we might be the ransomed ones, that we might be, Lord, just like you. And we give you thanks for the glory of you, Lord. Hallelujah. The, that song says, Your love never fails. Every morning is made new for us. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yep. I'm going to welcome those that are online. If it's on, if it's not, that's okay. Uh, Dana, you want to come on and give you all an opportunity to be able to give? Um, remember, Pastor Mar always likes to make mention of... Uh, a barbecue get up. I tell you what, that's not quite as much as my hot rods, but uh, you know, hallelujah. So if y'all can either give now or you can come up after the service, we just leave it up here. Oh. Hallelujah. God's good. Hallelujah. All the time. Robert, is this good for you? Okay, you're making it work. As long as you're not making me work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good to see y'all tonight. There again, Pastor Mar is at a football game. And if he's like me, he's going to come back with uh, not a full voice. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a time when my son was playing football and uh, I happened to be pastor that year. And uh, thank God for microphones. Because by the time I got back in, uh, even Sunday morning, I just was... Barely able to speak. Hallelujah. But you know what? We've got something so glorious to be thankful for as to who we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So many times we look at ourselves, you know, and it says looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. You know, we get a little discouraged in ourselves sometimes. We can. But you know what? It says that love never fails. Hallelujah. It never fails. Whew. Man, he saw me in my stinkiness and did everything that was necessary for me. All I had to do was accept him and say, yes, Lord, come into my heart and my life and do something in me. I remember a time when one guy said, I believe God could save, but I didn't believe he could save you. Hallelujah. That, anybody, ever, anybody say that about you at some point in time in your life? <laughs> I'll tell you what. So he, he, he's a rock, rock bottom kind of guy. Hallelujah. He said, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Lord, we just give you thanks tonight. They were talking about the, uh, the other Saturday we went to uh, Washington, D.C., Dana and I did. And it was a prayer march. Just to give you a little update, I think Bev had a better update than even I had. But we went and, uh, you know, when I found out I'm just a little older than I used to be. Yeah, it was almost 2,000 miles in four days, and, uh, and I did almost all the driving. Yeah, and, uh, but it was a glorious time. It was a, it was a time that this country needed. Uh, we got there, and we were there for a prayer march, which was supposed to happen on Saturday. Well, there was also a group there as part of the return, and it was a return to the Lord. And they started out that evening, and when we were at our hotel and, you know, we're rummaging around, these people are rushing and trying to get out, and we're like, where are you guys going? Well, we're part of the return. What's the return? And they tried to explain it, and I said, well, we're part of the prayer march. They goes, what's the prayer march? So there ended up being over 100,000 people there, 
And Bev said they were reported that over a quarter of a million people got saved in the midst of that. And that was a cry for this country. Because there are those that say we were not formed because of God. But God is the one that set this place up. The founding fathers. I mean, my son one time said, Dad, they're, they're, they're teaching in the colleges. They were just a bunch of drunks. Well, you know what? If they're drunk on the Holy Ghost, then that's okay. But there's a lot of stuff out there that says God's not really in this country. And I want to tell you what. He said, if you're after Israel and you're blessing them, then I'm going to bless you. So I'm telling you what, it was an awesome time. I mean, we got there and it was raining. And thank God uh, Dana was wise enough to bring little ponchos. And we stood for four, four and a half hours. And we cried and we worshiped. And they were repenting constantly. They were one after the other making comments about, God, how we've left you and how we've forsaken you. And I mean, it was constantly, and it, it just brought you, and there was a time, you know, on Saturday uh, before we did the prayer march, I mean, you know, I was dressed up halfway decent, and he, they said, it's time to get on your knees wherever you are, and uh, Jonathan Kahn was there and ministering a word, and I mean, we man, we're on our knees in the mud, and just worshiping the Lord. And I want to tell you what he said. If my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And turn from their wicked ways. I'll heal the land. He'll do what we can't do. He said all you got to do is be willing to turn. And say call out to me. And there was a lot of people calling out. There was a lot of shofars going on. And some of them was really good. And some of them was probably about like me. Just trying to get some a little bit of air coming out. But it was a good time. And I tell you what, we cannot forget this. You know, this has to be our cry. We're meeting on Sunday night, if you're not aware of it. But 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we come together to pray. And that's an important thing for us. So uh, it was a glorious time. You can get online and read about it. But, you know, it is not something that happened then. It is a daily, yes, Lord, have your way. I don't care what people are saying. I don't care what some of the news stations are saying. God's not done with this country. He's not done with us. And I, I, Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for the plan and purpose that you have for us that's greater than us. That's greater than the leaders of this country, Lord. You have a plan. And we pray your will be done in Jesus Christ. You be glorified in the midst of this country, Lord. That it affects other countries. And we pray for the nations, Lord. Hallelujah for the move of you, Lord, in us. That everything that you want to accomplish be accomplished through Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, I know you're all excited about uh, what you've got in front of you. I, for those that are not here, well, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. You decided not to be here, so uh, you didn't get the prize. Yeah, you didn't get the prize. Well, what I passed out for each one of you is... Uh, is some seeds, and I'm going to leave some in the back, and I also have, I'm going to move around a little bit, I also have some, uh, some produce, okay? So if these seeds aren't enough for you, there's a, there's a lot more here. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing this out is, uh, you know, the Bible talks about the Word of God, and, and I have talked about this before, about the seed. Now, uh, some of y'all have seen my gardens in the past, and, and I felt like I was supposed to say this again, otherwise I wouldn't say it. But I, I had a garden in the past, and uh, there was a time you couldn't see what was in my garden. I don't know if y'all have ever grown a garden that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I had to cut all the weeds out of the way where you could actually see that there were peppers actually in my garden. Well, you know what? Uh, we're going to be talking about what does the Word produce in your life? What kind of production is the word taking place in your life? Okay. And uh, my first scripture, it talks about in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. And God said, and this is why we're going to bring these things up and let you see them. God said, spoke to the earth, and he told the earth, he said, bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself and upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth obeyed 
And it performed what God said for it to do. Is it still doing that? I have a garden. And I'm telling you what, it's doing that. But do you know what? God put in these seeds potential. And I've told you this before. This potential doesn't do you any good as long as... Pat, did you get one of these? Oh, gracious. You just got to have one of these. You just got to have one of these. That's a dragon cayenne. Okay? So I've already warmed everybody. Now, y- y'all that aren't here, you're not going to get burned by it. But I told them don't stick their fingers in there. If they do, don't put their fingers in their eyes or their nose. Okay? So you can do that after the service. But in these seeds are great potential. But I want to tell you something. We're going to be talking about the Word of God. And in, in my garden, I have learned that I have some work to do. Because if I take these seeds as potent as they are, and I just lay them on the ground, I'm not going to get a whole lot out of them. They're probably, I don't think the birds are going to eat them. They might get a hold of one of them. They'll probably leave the rest of them alone. But, you know, there's some work to be done. And there was a time I didn't really know how to work the ground to where I could get the produce. Well, that's not the case anymore because I got more peppers than I can shake a stick at. You know, and I found out I got a big garden. I need to just not put as many plants in the ground. Yeah, I got to because I'm trying to give them away. And Dana, she's tirelessly trying to can these things and, Man, I'm loving it. I'm eating jalapenos and cayennes by the hand. I mean, I'm just stuffing them in my mouth. I mean, they're just working in me. You know, but what I'm trying to tell you is we're going to talk about the Word of God, but these things have potential. And, and when you look at these, there's, there's some of these over here that I've got big bags. If you looked at them together, they all look like the same. They all look like the same, but I want to tell you what. I got one of them's a Trinidad, and it's the second hottest pepper in the world. So they might look the same, but they don't act the same. They don't taste the same. They don't have the same punch that that Trinidad or maybe the jalapeno. I'm not the jalapeno. That jalapeno is weak. If jalapenos are not hot at all. But when you get a hold of the Serranos and all of this, they all have a potential, even though they look like they don't. And as long as you keep those things on the shelf, What are they going to do for you? They ain't going to do a thing for you. I want to to show you something. Dana, and this is just the power of why I I read that scripture. God spoke to the earth, and the earth is doing everything it can to obey the word of God. And Dana had, this is a a squash. And it was, the seed was in the freezer for about eight years. Okay. You know, your Bible can be sitting on your bedside, and it has so much potential in it, but you ain't going to get a squatting thing out of it unless you do something. Oh, squat, yeah, squash. So she took it out, and she put it in, the, in, in just this little pot. And you know what it's going to produce? Jalapenos, right? What's it, Pat, what's it going to produce? A squash. So what I'm trying to tell you is this word of God has such potential and God knew this. And he set things in order. And it's for us to stop and think because if I put something in the ground and I tend it right, you know what I had to do to my garden? I couldn't just go out there. Remember Jesus talked about the the sower sowing the word or the seed, which was the word of God. And he said some of them just, some seeds fell on the The wayside, and boy, that was some of mine at times. And some fell on the stony ground, and and some fell among thorns, and then some fell on good ground. I tell you what, mine fell on good ground this year. And and you need to prepare your heart for the word of God, because there's times we don't prepare ourselves. I mean, you know, uh, I've gone through this where I, I try to read through the Bible in the in a year. You know, I take some pride in that. But I want to tell you what. If I don't let that word work in me, you know what? It's just like spitting in the wind. I've told you before. Now, here's some of my, this is not all. Here's some of my, remember my gospels? Y'all ever heard of those before? Yeah. Yeah. 
I, see, I tell you what, I still pick these things up. I sit there, and I mean, they are words like having arrows and dragging cayennes. They work in me. They warm me up. When I feel down and out, it's not so much somebody else encouraging me. It's me encouraging myself in the Word because there's times people might not speak to you an encouraging word. They may say something contrary to the Word of God. And he said, casting down every imagination that exalts itself against the Word of God. Now you might come up to me and say, Gerald, these things aren't hot peppers at all. And all I say is, toss a seed in your mouth. That might not grow more peppers, but it'll let you know that it's not a dead seed. So as, as the Word tells us that God created the earth to do things, I love it. But my garden, I didn't, I didn't finish it. I had, my garden's now about a 25 by 25 foot. I want to tell you what, Lord have mercy. And I went out there last year. Man, I tell you, it's time to prepare yourself for the Word of God that's going to change you. And all I mean is just, he said, if you'll just hunger and thirst after me, if you'll just draw near to me, it ain't we got to go out there breaking, I mean, he, the Word breaks up the ground. But I got out there, and I mean to tell you, I, Lord have mercy, you got to want something. To do what I had to do. I mean, I got my big old tiller out there, and I'm breaking that ground, and I'm grabbing stuff and pulling it out. I broke it up. He talks about letting the Spirit of the Lord till our heart and prepare us for the Word. Sometimes we casually just get in, and we pick up a Word and go, Oh, yeah, I did that today. Hallelujah. But if you let that Word work in you, it'll change you. It'll start producing something in you that's going to, man, you're going to say, Lord, I'm glad you did that. But there's a breaking to be done. And I mean, it's work. It's work. The Lord told me in the back room, He said, you just keep your hands on the plow. There's times we need plowing done in us. We need the hard ground broken up. And so as I was uh, getting in my garden, and uh, I put a fence up because I didn't want the deer to get it. I didn't want them to, they, those are my peppers. They can have a little tomatoes, but, and I'll even want them to give them those because I like salsa, you know. So there's a purpose. And God has a purpose for you. And that purpose for you in 2 Corinthians, this is not a scripture, I'm still on the first one, but 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it says, as we continue in the Word, as a mirror, it's changing us. So we're not just trying to read a word to be able to say, oh, I did my stuff today. No, I want it to change me. It said it's changing us into the very image of Jesus Christ. It said he's the firstborn of many like him. And that's what I want to be. It's like him. <clears throat> but anyway, back to the garden. <laughs> I'm tilling the ground and it's not easy. And I'm working it up. I'm putting, I'm putting in what I need to. I'm doing manure and whatever else. Getting it ready. I put plastic down. Oh, man, I go, you seed, you ain't messing with me. Put the plastic down. Because if you've seen my garden before, uh, there was a time uh, I asked him, I put up a picture and I said, what's this look like? And he go, uh, looks like weeds. And I had to clear all the weeds where you could see my jalapeno. But I ended up, after I did all the, uh, the cleaning and the preps, and when the springtime came, I pulled out all the plastic and I immediately put down a breathable tarp. And I cut only little holes. And I put my little plants in them. But you know what Dana and I are going to do? We know these boogers are hot. We know what they can do. So we're going to actually go and use these seeds to produce next year. And you know what? These God's Word, when He spoke to the earth, those plants, those herb-bearing and fruit-bearing items, they don't produce just one seed. I want to tell you what. All of these seeds, they came out of one pepper each. So I want to tell you what. When, when that Word of God wants to come in you and work in you, you know what He wants to, he, you know what he wants to do? He wants us to start working on somebody else. He wants all of a sudden you to start bearing fruit and somebody else going, you know, hey, I like that. You know, you're able to share and, and work on somebody else that there's a produce. Good gracious. I mean, 
I'm telling you, look at this stuff. There's a bounty. There's a bounty. And it's just what God does. If, if we're walking in this word, will work in us in such a way that it's not only going to change us, it's going to be helping other people. There's, gonna, there's some other mouths that's been hot. Doug, has your mouth been hot because of my peppers? Yeah, okay. So the thing is, is, uh, is this word, and he references at a, as a seed. And it has so much power and potential, but if you don't work it, if you don't let it work you, if you don't prepare yourself in a place that this seed can actually manifest itself in you, whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, whether it's peace, whether it's joy, whatever it is. He said, if you, you just come to me. He said, you come to me. Listen to this. He goes on. And he says, and the earth brought forth grass. It was happy to do it. Now, this was before, you know, Adam did his thing, okay? But it's still obeying. Even in a cursed state, it's still obeying God. And he tells us that if we will eat of his word, it's going to produce in us. And it's going to produce death. What's it going to produce? Life. In Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, he said, As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven returns not thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth bud, it has a purpose that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Lord, I thank you for the seed to the sower and the habaneros and the and all the other stuff. I, I thank God for it. But he did that to where we could see. Do you know he took Jesus? Jesus, the Bible says in John 1, was what? He was the Word. And the Word was made flesh. He said everything was made by him. And he took the Word. And Jesus referenced about the seed and the sower. He said the seed or the, the sower sowed the Word. So who's the Word? It's him. So he sowed himself in the earth. Remember in, in Genesis, God spoke and he said, let us make man in our image. What did he make man from? The dirt. <laughs> the same dirt that God spoke to and said, when I put a seed in you, I expect something coming out. Are you starting to hear me here? I mean, he wants... When that word, when you hear it, don't be those that are just, man, what are we going to eat next? Shoot fire. You know, I got to go to, I got to go to work. I got to do that. You know, I mean, we're sidetracked. I'll tell you what, these seeds have a purpose. You know what the purpose is? To produce more like them. And I like that. And that's exactly what God wants in us. He wants us to recognize in the natural, that's exactly what a seed does. But he also wants us to recognize in the in the spirit, this is, this is what he does. He said, as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, it does not return except that it does what it's supposed to do. He said, so shall my word that goes out of my mouth, it, my word, shall not return unto me void, but it will, my word, accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. So I want to tell you what, when Pastor Mar is declaring words that we're loving, and if it goes in one ear and out the other, okay, we're, you're not going to get what you need. There was a time in my life when I talk about the, my gospels, I was on all kinds of medications. And the, and the Lord showed me a scripture, and it's my next verse for... Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. So that other one, he says, my word's going to accomplish what I send it to do. We got to take a hold of it. We got to be in the place to where when, when we hear the word, we say, don't let go of it. Write it down. Write it down. Put it in your pocket. Pull it out. And make sure that you let that word work in you. If I had just put those seeds in the ground and not tended to them, you know what would have taken over? The weeds would have taken over. Something else would have distracted me, or I would have forgotten it. 
Okay, how many of y'all were here Sunday? Everything pastor said, y'all, y'all, y'all remember every bit of it, don't you? No? You remember little bits and pieces of it. You know, I had to go back and listen again. You know what I do? I start writing it down. Because I want to tell you what, even when I was younger, it'd go, it'd shoot through one ear and out the other. Then he goes, are you listening to me? Uh, well, can you tell me again? Yeah, I, th- I thought I did. So the thing is, is we need to be attentive. There are words that God wants to put in you. There are seeds that he wants to put in you, and it's not a habanero seed. It is his word that's going to change you. You know what? I don't like wimpy peppers, okay? So don't give me wimpy peppers, okay? I like hot peppers. And there is something that you need, and God knows you need it. And he wants that word that you need to be working in you that it changes you. That it does in you what you need. And there was a time I was on gobs of medications. And he gave me this scripture, Proverbs chapter 4, 20 through 23, attend unto my word. That means give attention to it. That just doesn't mean, well, I was here Sunday morning and boy, that was a, that was a good word pastor had. I, I remember a little bit of it, but... But, I, you know, uh, it's being attentive and saying, Lord, help me to be able to hear you. And when I do that, let it make something happen in me. He said, incline, incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them, health and healing to their flesh, and keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. So what I'm telling you is, is these seeds have power in them, but they don't have the power that the Word of God has. And when you're in need of something, find in the Word what seed you need. And when you find that, you eat that until it starts producing in you. You know what, if... If we leave this in this little container, you know, it's probably going to outgrow this container. So there's going to be some adjustments we're going to have to make if we want fruit. How many of y'all like squash plants that never produce? You know, there's times in our life God's spoken a word in us and it hadn't produced in us. Because we've, we've left it alone. We have. We've heard it. We said, oh, man, that was, oh, that was good. And not too long after that, we done forgot that thing. Now, come on. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I know the feeling. And that's why I started doing this. I said, Lord, I want your word working in me. I want it to where when the enemy comes, I'm, will, I'm able to say oh, no. You know, it says casting down every imagination that exalts itself against the word of God. Well, you know, do you ever hear voices and you're like, well, that doesn't sound right. Well, if it doesn't sound right, it's probably not right. But sometimes we don't know because we don't know what the Word says. And I tell you what, any of y'all got phones, man, you know, I don't, I don't like some of this stuff, but I like it because I can get on there and go, I ask it a question. And man, it can, it can find my answer. It knows that I'm constantly asking the Word. So it'll find my answer before I can even find it in the Word. And it gives it to me. And I'm like, Lord, that's really good. But I'm going to tell you what, since I have eaten the Word of God and constantly are reminding myself when I'm a little down and out, I don't have to go, okay, Gerald, pump yourself up. No, I grab a hold of the Scripture and I start reading them one after the other. And I let it make an, have an impact in my life. Okay? So, so the thing is, is for us to understand that if we will recognize that as we plant these kind of things, and I know this... You know, this may, may look a little weird, but the bottom line is, is these seeds have power. But these seeds, the Word of God, have greater power. Because these are all temporary. These are all eternal. They're going to change us. They're going to change your attitude. These words can bring heal, health and healing to you. They can bring deliverance to you. I told you before, there's times God spoke to me and said, I want you to do this or that. And when I obeyed it, then things changed. 
And when I plant the seeds of the harvest that I want and I tend to it, you know what I get? I get a harvest. So it's not enough when you hear what the word that's being said, except you take a hold of it. And if something jumps out at you, when Pastor Mars pre presenting something, you go, oh, man, that was good. Bring, make sure you got a pencil and something with you and be able to write it down and say, that ministered to me. There's a time in my life when I was working, I had my, I've got the New Testament on CDs. And I tell you what, when I went to work, went to work it was about a 20, 25 minutes drive, and I was preaching, I was praying, I was listening, the word was constantly going on, and there's times, you know, you can read through something and it just seems like you're just reading through it. But then all of a sudden, something just goes, boom, and just jumps off the page at you. Or it comes out and you have to, and I'd stop it. So I'm telling you, let that word of God constantly be in the midst of your ears. You know, that it be in the midst of your life that you're constantly aware of it. I was telling Danny the other day, you know, if you're not careful, you can let the woes of life sort of beat you down. You ever been there? Okay. And, uh, and it's not God's fault. And it doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. Sometimes we just get a little lax or we get, uh, maybe we're going through something. But I have always found out that if I will take a hold of God's Word and I will begin to eat this Word as a habanero will burn my mouth and cause me to enjoy, this Word will change my circumstances if I will let it. It will cause me to be an overcomer if I will let it. It will actually work in me and it'll tell the enemy, no, that's not right. And you need to have the word in you when somebody speaks to you and says, well, this and this, you need to be able to say, well, the word says this. Or you need to be quiet and go and find out, say, Lord, give me a word on this that I can stand against a bad report. Or I can stand against things going on in my body. Because I was on pain medication. I was on... I was on quite a bit of stuff, okay? And I was uh, 200 and some pounds. I was messed up. I was almost having heart attacks. I, things were going on in my life. And I said, Lord, help me. And this is a scripture. He said, son, attend unto my word. And he said, if you will do this. And as I did this, now there again, I wasn't trying to do something that was going to take me all the way through the Bible at the time, I would just read and read and read the New Testament. And every time something jumped out at me, I wrote it down because I knew that was something I needed. And when I would sit down and I'd have trouble, I was constantly repeating those scriptures. I carried them at work and I pulled them out of my pocket and I read them. And there were times, I've told you before, sitting there at my desk and I'm feeling like I'm about to have a heart attack and I'm hearing words say, you know, you better say something, write down a note to your wife because you're, gonna, you're not going to see her again. And all of a sudden that word rose up out of me and said, no in the name of Jesus. So I'm telling you what, I can't enjoy habaneros out of my garden if I don't plant them there. So, so it's for us to find out what the Word of God has for us and to take hold of it. I used to actually, people say something, I go, you know, I got a word on that. And I'll, I actually pull it out and then start flipping. Start flipping through my, and find it and give it to them. I say, hey, take this. Because God has a word for each one of us to be able to walk in victory every day, no matter what goes, no matter what happens. And it's not always some audible voice. I mean, you know, boy, that'd be cool if, you know, all of a sudden, you know, that'd be some audible voice. But there's still an inner, inner voice. And when, and when this word is constantly in you, it will come up out of you. It'll come up out of you, and it'll come out with force, and it'll rebuke the enemy for you. It will. You know, all of a sudden, one of them says, Philippians 4, 19, My God shall supply all of my needs according to His riches in glory. And there are times in our life we go, Woe is me. I'm just, I just can't make anything happen. It's just, you know, this and that. And if we take hold of exactly what He says and find it out, then it'll change our lives. No, we can't. But, but the bottom line is the Word can. 
Because this little seed only has power if it's put to work. And this Word of God is only going to work in you as you let it work in you. Because Jesus said the sower sold the Word. And those that fell on good ground, they produced a hundredfold. And I want that in my life. I, I do. And, and there's, in, our, in our process of this, it's for us to actually be in that place where we say, Lord, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to read through the whole Bible, even though I'm doing that. But I sit and I also say, Lord, I want to feast on your word. And I stay a lot of the New Testament. I'm constantly reading. And things are jumping out. And when they jump out, they work in me. And they do things in me. So, I have one other scripture. And it says in Proverbs chapter 18, 20 through 21. Um, it says, a man's belly or womb. shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. <clears throat> so you can hear the word of God, but if you speak contrary to the word of God, you know what you're going to get? The words you speak. You can hear this word, Pastor Mar, or whoever can give you fantastic words, and you go out and you speak death over yourself. then you're going to get death. So, I want you to understand, let's plant the right seeds. Let's make sure that we understand what the Word of God says about us, that we're not deceived by the enemy to say, no, you can't have that, or no, you can't do that, or no, you can't say that, or you, you can't, you know, and because that's what he'll do. He tries to tell you, no, oh, God's got nothing for you. Look what you've done. He tries to remind you of your past. You know, he didn't do that with me anymore. And I, I'm glad, but there was a time he did. But he says here, death and life are in the power of our tongue. And this word is life. And the enemy, and even sometimes people around us, you know what they'll do? They won't speak life over you. They're not trying to speak death, but they will speak words that are contrary to what the Word of God says. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, and that life more abundantly. He said, I've come that you can have every promise that God has. His Word is filled with promise upon promise. It says that we are to be in a place that we are the image of Jesus Christ. That when people look at us, they are excited, and they go, I won't. I want what you've got. And sometimes in our lives, we're just not there. You know? And that's okay. We, we're still a work in progress. But I want you to understand, is if these seeds can produce something that I like, maybe not you, these seeds can produce what God, through Jesus Christ, has already purchased for us. That there's nothing that comes against you that the Word of God doesn't have a response. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the enemy may go, well, you know, that's okay over here, but that doesn't work over here. What does all things say? All things. No matter, no matter what's coming in your, in your life, in your situation, you can find a word on it. Pat, can't you? You ever done that? You guys ever been in a place that all of a sudden you're, you're going through a struggle and you listen to family? Uh, you, you listen to those that love you and uh, they go, oh man, this is bad. This is real bad. I've never seen it this bad before. I don't see how in the world you're going to, man, I, my, this is no good. Lord, Hammers, you, 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 need to, you need to get yourself checked in or something. Or, you know, this is, this is, yeah. And you know, sometimes we say that. Or sometimes we hear that. And if, and if we don't recognize what's going on, we take a hold of that. And we let it work in us. And I want to tell you what, if you don't like habaneros, don't let me come over to your house when you've got your ground tilled because I'll drop some of these seeds in there that you don't like and you're not going to find out until it comes up. There was a time in my garden I was treasuring this plant. And I've told some of y'all before, I was treasuring it. I'm going, oh, man, this thing, I'm just treating it well, you know. And Dana comes out in my garden, and she's looking around. She goes, what's that? 
I said, oh, man, I'm fixing it up. She said, that's a weed. There are times we let weeds come in our garden that's there to choke the Word of God, that's there to stop the promise that God has for you. The enemy's desire is that you don't walk in what's already been purchased for you. He's there to lie to you and look like a pepper plant. Well, it wouldn't have been long I'd have figured out it wasn't a pepper plant. But at that point in time, it was, it was the prettiest weed in my garden. So I'm telling you that, that God has His Word for us to take a hold of it and to let it change us. And the only way you're going to get... I'm going to tell you what now. We're gonna, how much work did it take you to put that in the ground and get that squash to come out? Yeah, not a whole lot. Well, it did take some work. But those that I put in my garden have taken a lot of work. And I want to tell you what, for you to have God's Word working in you, that means if you need to get yourself a CD player at the house, and you take that Word of God, and it doesn't have to always be preaching, it just needs to be the Word. Because John 1 said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the same was with Him. Everything was made by Him. Hallelujah. And His intent he says, the firstborn of many, like, he wants us to be just like Jesus. I tell you what, when the, when the devil sees us, they go, wait a minute. I don't want to be like the, son, the seven sons of Sceva and try to cast out a devil and the, and the spirit in him say, you know, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but I don't know who you are. I want us to be in a place to where we take a hold of the word and when the enemy comes, when he knocks at the door, we let the word... We let the Word answer it. And if, and if He comes your way and it doesn't feel right, you need to stop and say, Lord, help me, to, help me to understand. But if you're not in that Word, if you're not eating on that Word, because I want to tell you what, when you plant seeds in the ground, you're either going to have to, if, in my garden, they don't waste. And that's sometimes, a, 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 you know, I'm trying to give them away. But I don't want the, I don't want the Word in my life to rot. And what I mean is I don't want it to, for, for a word to be spoken in me and me not be able to walk in that. And sometimes it takes us to constantly water the word. How, did, you get, did you have to water your garden this year? You know what? You know how you water the word? You, that word that you need, you keep it in front of you. He said keep it ever in front of you. Until it's producing. Don't, don't stop until that thing, because like I say, when all of a sudden the enemy comes and says, oh, woe is you. You'll get to the place where you go, <laughs> you don't know me. There's no woe in me. I'm telling you. He'll come to the place, if you, if, if you say, well, boy, the devil's on my shoulder all the time, well, <laughs> that ain't my fault. You know, it's to the place where we know what the Word says, and that's exactly what we respond to. He says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Me and you have the same opportunity to speak life over death. And the way we do it is we speak what the Word of God says. If those little seeds have potential... That Word of God has a greater potential in the midst of your life <clears throat> because it'll change you into the very image of Him. All you got to do is look back at uh, Peter. Now, he walked with Jesus. He saw, saw all the miracles, and sometimes we say, boy, if I saw what Peter saw. Oh, man. It ain't enough to see. It's to experience. It's to let that Word of God come in you, and it'll change you. Uh, we had a... We had some trees that we planted in the ground. And I want to tell you what, they were small at the beginning. One of them was a pin oak. It changed the atmosphere. And there are these words of God will change your atmosphere if you'll let them. But you know what? If I put those habanero seeds in the ground and did nothing else to them, they would not produce the way I want them. So if you want God's word to produce in you, you're going to have to tend your garden. You're going to have to do some work, but it's well worth every work that you put in it. Because I have walked eight years without medications. 
those things that I had trouble with sometimes rise themselves up and say, boy, it looks like your, your knuckles are starting to, you know, oh, yeah. And you, you know what I do? I don't go, woe is me. I say, no, in the name of Jesus. The curse has been broken over me. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, yea, all things have become new. So I'm just telling you, it's our choice. Doug, it's our choice. If you want habaneros, we plant habaneros. We want jalapenos, we plant jalapenos. So I'm, I, I'm saying to you that we have a choice. Make sure to family members, you're always speaking life. You're always encouraging one another. If, if you know they're having issues, find a word. Not a word to slap them upside the head, but a word and say, hey, take a hold of this. Because that word of God's going to do life to you, no death. If anything dies, it's the old man. It's the things that you don't want. It's the trying by fire. I want to tell you what, there's times there's trying by fire to try to remove stuff out of our lives. But if we'll take a hold of this, I mean, man, if I put these in your hands and you read those every day, I want to tell you what, you'd be like, oh boy, oh boy, this is... But you know what? That's the work you have to put in. You have to sit there and you have to say, Lord, because I'm going to tell you what. These habanero seeds didn't fly out of the sky and plant themselves in my garden. And they didn't do that. I had some work to do. Now I'll let you read those. I don't know that I'm going to give them to you. You probably, can't, you probably can't read my handwriting anyway. But the bottom line is, if, if, if I am willing to work, I'm about to finish. If I am willing to work hard to get habaneros to grow in my garden, I am willing to work harder to have the Word of God working in the midst of my life that changes me and causes other people to see that God is who He says He is. That you have a boldness. That when the enemy comes, you say no. People say, you can't do that. Maybe you can't. Now, I'm not saying sometimes the enemy doesn't try to overwhelm us, but he said, greater is he that's in us than he that... Did, did you, greater is he that's in us. Can you say that? Greater is he that's in me than he that comes against me. Because Jesus and the Holy Ghost is never going to come against you. He's going to be there to speak and build and pull you up. He said, what did we just sing the song? His love never fails. I mean to tell you, if you mess up today, tomorrow's a new day. Get up and say, oh, Lord. If you didn't read that word yesterday, get up tomorrow and read that word. If you know there's things going in your life that you need some help with, find out in the word what you need to have and eat that word. If you're wanting jalapenos, don't plant habaneros because you're going to be surprised when you put them in your mouth. They're not going to do what you want them to do. They're going to set you on fire. So I'm telling you, when, when you know you're having issues, no matter what they are, you can go to pastor and ask him. But you ask the Holy Spirit. You say, give me, give me a word that I need. Because I want to tell you what. That's what he's been saying. What do you need? You need a word on it. So if you're having trouble, find out what the word of God says. He said, these words I speak are spirit and they are life. Spirit and life. So no matter where you are, no matter what goes on, <clears throat> I didn't, I'm going to give you this last one. 1 Peter 1, 23, he doesn't have it. It says, we're born again of an incorruptible seed. Incorruptible seed by the Word of God. So I want to tell you what, if you will let that Word work in you, I mean, you... If you took some snapshots, take them back. That word up there that says a man's belly, that's a womb. We know what happens in a womb, right? Thank God I don't have a womb. Hallelujah. But you know, that's, hey, that, su, that seed is there to produce something in us. And that word of God wants to produce Jesus Christ in the midst of our lives. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these peppers that you've given us, Lord. But more than that, we thank you for you, Lord Jesus. For you are that seed sown in the earth, risen from the dead, changed. Hallelujah. That causes us to be changed. You said in baptism, we are buried with you (laughs) and we are raised again new creations. And I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, as each one of these are having issues in areas that they will find in your word exactly what they need to be able to stand on and they will declare it and they will allow your word to change and bring them victory in Jesus' name. And we thank you for that. You know, when he comes back, the Bible says in Revelations, he's called what? What's on his vesture? The Word of God. And he doesn't come back defeated. So, me and you are not defeated. No matter what the enemy says. We're not in his camp. We're in a new camp. (laughs) In a new camp. So whatever your struggles have been, find out what the Word says. If you need help, ask somebody. Ask the Spirit of God. You can call pastor. You can text me. I'm having an issue in it. You'll find it, and it'll make a change in you. If any of you need prayer, come on up. I'll pray for you. But I pray you just get, oh, you still have that basket if we need it. But I pray that you take a hold of what God's Word says. You can take those home, and then you can... Bring them back another time. That way you can just read through them. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Because the thing is, is it's about those things that I had issues with. I may not have issues with them now, but I still have to uh, eat of it. Because I'm going to tell you what. You know, when I keep eating out of my garden, uh, there's a time I, I might run out. So I, I want to keep eating. And sometimes what that means is i got to plant again. So let that word constantly work in you. So y'all be blessed tonight. Need prayer, I'll pray with you. But let that word of God work in you in Jesus' name. Hope you got something out of it. Praise the Lord. Amen.